Hi guys, I'm super excited because now I can be able to continue with the uh, simulate modeling of electric vehicle. I was a little bit busy, but now I'll be able to model this complete simulation for the electric vehicle drive train. And today on our video, it's a continuation on where we left last time that was video 8.0 today is 8.1 and i will make sure by the end of our series i model everything here today we will focus on vehicle body we are going to model this vehicle body vehicle body it allows us to to, to model the dynamics of the vehicle okay okay let's begin Okay, I'm going to model vehicle body. The, and as I have said, vehicle body is used to to model the dynamics of the vehicle. Tire modeling, brake here, and sensors. We're going to use speedometer and odometer to measure and validate physical quantities in the model. Remember, speedometer measures speed, odometer measures how far the vehicle has traveled. Uh, then we're going to see the effects of terrain and weed in our vehicle. Okay, we're going to explore how weed and terrain can affect the motion of the vehicle. Then later we are going to do some brake modeling here, yeah, brake to see how brake affects the, the dynamics of the vehicle. Okay, I've already started the simulink as you can see. And the first thing we need is vehicle body. Okay. Uh, for you to use the vehicle body, you go to library browser, you go to simscape. I'm using drive lines tires and vehicles you select vehicle body okay vehicle body you have to understand this the vehicle body is used to model the longitudinal dynamics of the of the vehicle and in this model we're going to assume that there is no lateral forces that arise from steering inclination or in external force uh, this vehicle body allows us to model longitudinal dynamics only it does not account for the lateral dynamics it's only horizontal motion longitudinal dynamics of the vehicle and very important thing we are going to model half car not a full car assuming that the load is distributed equally on left and right side okay because whenever you're focusing on longitudinal dynamics the forces on left and right we assume they are the same okay therefore all the dynamics of the vehicle longitudinally will be captured by this block it has six ports each port, this one, this one is where, this one is, uh, this one, this one is where horizontal motion of the vehicle is connected to. We get the horizontal motion on H, H for horizontal. V port, we get longitudinal velocity, the horizontal, the velocity at which the vehicle is moving with, we get at this V. If you want to measure, basically, if you want to measure the velocity of your vehicle, you have to use V port. W, as you can see, arrow is width. W means width. Whenever something is moving, vehicle or airplane, we have we, we get a arrow, we get a width that has some aerodynamics drag force on the vehicle. Beta is the terrain, maybe slope. If the vehicle is moving on a down, down a hill, we give a negative value. 
if the vehicle is moving up a hill you give a positive value if the vehicle is moving horizontally you give a, you don't give anything here okay nr and nf these two represent the force on the rear axle and the force on the front axle this is the normal force that acts on the wheel nr for the this the normal force acting on the rear wheel nf this is the normal forces acting on the front wheel we do these measurements together we see the forces on the rear wheels and the forces on the front wheel and these forces de depend on the center of gravity if the center of gravity is towards one side maybe it is towards rear side and r is bigger than nf we'll do that practically here okay just just give some theory um let me do again here just to give some theory here whenever you're sizing any any vehicle in case it is ev electric vehicle for example you're sizing the ev ev powertrain you have to consider three forces the first force you have to consider is rolling resistance force maybe you know that rolling resistance occurs due to the friction between the tires and the driving surface if this is your tire this is the road the the contact patch here there's a resistance that is called rolling resistance that is calculated by you have to get the coefficient of the rolling resistance the coefficient here you multiply by the mass of the vehicle to get f roll we, we, go, we usually give it name f roll rolling resistance second force you have to consider is what we call aerodynamics drag force that is uh, due to the weed if i go here due to this weed this arrow means weed there's some aerodynamics drag force will be exerted on the vehicle formula given by a half coefficient of drag cd projected area front area that is af for the front area density of air or rho multiplied by v squared and this v this value of v is the value we get here v and all these parameters here all these parameters you have to define them in this block all of them this block defines you have to define these parameters in this block this block has to capture these parameters for the aerodynamics drag force that force you have to consider is that force is the force we call gradient force if a vehicle is moving up a hill if your vehicle is here moving up a hill uh, don't worry on by how i'm drawing i'm a poor artist uh this gradient this fitter you have to overcome these are this force now you have to overcome due to this this fitter they have they have the gradient here they have the force you have to overcome it is the force is usually given by mg weight 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 sin theta this weight sin theta okay these are the three forces you have to consider whenever you are modeling your whenever you are doing some some dynamics of the of the vehicle and we are going to capture all of them when in this model the first one the first thing we need to do is to para to give parameters we need to we need to give some parameters or some definitions here you have to define this model by giving its parameters if you double click 
these are the parameters you have to define all of them okay and these parameters i'm going to use uh, a script matlab script here i have already made these parameters as we're going to use these parameters here the 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 driver mass 80 vehicle mass this depends on your parameters if maybe your mass is 400 you have to put 400 um, then the center of gravity cg we're going to define all these parameters in this block model here therefore let me define all of them for the mass the mass is the total mass the total mass is the mass of rider mass therefore this is rider mass plus vehicle mass and i'm using cages you can see here therefore cages number of wheels per axle and i said i'm going to use one wheel because i'm assuming the assumption is uh the load is dis distributed equally on both left and right side therefore i'm going to use just one axle then horizontal distance from center of gravity cg to the front axle you have to define the horizontal distance the center of gravity position from axle from from the front axle then from the rear axle and from the ground here for now i'm going to use the, these values in millimeters i'm using these values for purpose of demonstration but you can get your actual value this one is uh, front front axle this one is the uh, rear Axo. this one is a uh, cg cg height okay for the gravity acceleration leave it as default drag as, as i said you have to define this parameter as i said the vehicle has a aerodynamics drag and this aerodynamics drag is we need coefficient of drag that is cd here which is a uh, where is it drag coef drag that's called coefficient we also need frontal area of the vehicle in meter squared this one is a uh, front front area we can use the front projected area density we can use default let's use default for now for the density okay leave this one set default for now you have double check millimeters here gravity fine you can say okay that's how you define all the parameters now the parameters are fully defined of our vehicle model okay next step we have to define i said we have to define rolling resistance and rolling resistance is we have is defined in in tire therefore the next thing is to put tires in our model this is the vehicle body vehicle body needs a tire we go back to label browser sinkscape driveline use these tires we have a tire simple tire parameterized and tire magic formula magic formula is commonly used block to define tire this block it models the longitudinal forces at the tire road contact patch as this tire moves the contact patch it models the longitudinal forces at that point okay and this tire has four parts and n is where we get the vertical load we are putting load the vertical load that is a normal load therefore this n has to connect either to nr of or nf because nr and nf is where we get normal forces on the front axle and rear axle therefore n is where we 
we input the normal forces to the tire. Tire can slip. This is where we define. We get S, the value of slipping. We'll do, I'll go deeper. I'll go deeper on these parameters on the, on the next videos. A is where we define axle. The tire is connected to the axle. Therefore, that axle has an horizontal motion. Therefore, the horizontal motion of the tire is defined at A, meaning we, we have to connect A to, to, yeah, we have to connect A. This is where we assume A is rotating. Heat is where we define horizontal motion. That's what I meant. We connect A, we usually connect H to H, not A to H, because a, we get horizontal motion of the tire, but A, we get axle, axle horizontal motion. Okay? We get axle motion. Basically, axle motion is the, the, the motion of the axle is rotation. The axle rotates. Basically, for you to avoid confusion, just understand axle rotates, but not the horizontal motion that is of the whole vehicle is captured at H. The reason why these two blocks has a H. Okay? At this H and this H, we are the same. The reason why this H can't connect here, can't connect here, but can but can connect here because we are the same basically. Okay? And I said, let me first of all delete these ones here. I said, uh, Tires, they usually model the longitudinal forces at the tire road contact patch using magic formula. This tire uses magic formula. At the magic formula, you have to define the parameters. Therefore, if you double click here, this is the tire, these are the parameters of the tire. If you can either be, par you have to give parameters using four ways, but as you're going to use constant magic formula coefficients, uh, these coefficients are already here. Uh, let me go here. You can see tire. These are the coefficients from the formula called magic formula. You can do some research on that formula. Since we are not designing tire, I would go deeper to these parameters. Oops, let's go in. Then you need to give some rolling radius in inch. Yeah. Lowering this one is a tire. Tire dia. You have to divide it by two to get a radius. Dynamics. Dynamics is where you define uh, some inertia and some stiffness, stiffening of the tire. Leave them as default for now. Rolling resistance, remember we need to define rolling resistance force. We have to get that, we have to input that value to our vehicle body. We have to define this value. And we have two ways, pressure and velocity dependent. This value can vary as pressure inside the tire changes and also as the velocity changes. But for now we are using constant. For now, let's use constant for now. Constant coefficient, that is a uh, ROR underscore resist. Like that. These ones, leave them as default for now. Okay. Now we have defined all the parameters of our tire. Therefore, the next step is to connect this tire to the block. You, you, I want to take this tire, you press space. This tire is, uh, we, we should have a rear tire and a front tire, therefore, let me call this one is a, a rear, rear tire. Don't need this word. What's the rear tire? Let me copy this to get front front tire okay um, fit 
want to rotate this control r i want to rotate to have s and h to face up because i have to connect this h to this h because we said h represent horizontal motion and all these three blocks they exhibit a horizontal motion we have to, to rotate both and control i like that because i want to connect h port to h port like that then then connect this to that because both exhibit a horizontal motion next is we need to get velocity i said at port v is where we get longitudinal velocity of the vehicle therefore i have to get ps simulate converter here and connect it to this port and use scope this is where we get velocity this one is the speedometer 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 uh, where we are going to get the, the the velocity of the of the vehicle spelling is a speedometer um, I'm not sure about the spelling okay then we need not to go to the next one is uh, is the width because i said the w is for the weed and the weed is where we get the aerodynamic drag but for now i won't put anything on the weed for now let's leave leave it leave w and beta zero for now next we need to connect n to nr you know the reason why because at nr we get the rear axial normal force this normal force is being exerted on the rear wheel same case applies to front one being exerted to the front wheel therefore we get normal force here that go to the rear wheel and on the front axle that is a normal force it goes to the front wheel right for now we want model slip these two we want to model them for now therefore uh, let me terminate this signal go to library go to foundation library here go to physical signals you go to the sync add terminate i want to terminate it let me control r to rotate copy i want to terminate this one We'll model them later, but for now is just a basic introduction to the vehicle body. Okay. Next thing we need is before we perform simulation, I said we usually need solver. I'll have some solver here with the solver connected here. Let me connect this over there. Then A is where we define axle. If you want to model four wheel drive, for example, four wheel drive, you have to connect A to A. You have to connect these two. That becomes a four wheel drive because rear and front are connected. But for now, we are going to assume rear axle and front axle rotate independently with no resistance. Therefore, I'm going to put a, a free, free head rotational. Therefore, go to Simscape, Foundation, Mechanical, Rotational Element, Rotational Free Head. This free to rotate block. I'm assuming now it is a free to rotate block. But if you're modeling a four wheel drive, you cannot make it free to rotate. This can this this means this can rotate independent of this, but for the wheel four wheel drive that is not possible. If you run this model, let's see what happens on the speedometer. Double click, we are getting a zero velocity. Why? 
because if you leave this without any value here on the w and b and beta we are assuming our vehicle is on a horizontal is on horizontal ground such that it can't move it needs some uh, some actuator to move therefore you have to put your vehicle on a slope let's now assume our vehicle is on a slope for us now to assume we need some value here on a slope also we need to provide some value for the weed okay let's go to the library go to the i'm providing a physical signal go therefore go to physical signals here sources constant c for now i'm going to use a constant but in the near future videos we're going to go deep a little bit using a vlookup tables but for now let's provide a constant value okay like that yeah and call this value as uh, let me call this one as a uh, terrain just need to add it this is a terrain and another one called width go take this up a little bit some like that yeah the value here i'm going to use one the block this vehicle block at w uses meters per second therefore if you put one this, this one means it is one meter per second of width terrain this this pot for the beta uses radians per second uses radians so radians not degrees this one is a one degree you have to put a negative ne one negative means it's a downward slope let's assume a 0 0.5 a small slope you have to multiply by pi of divided by 180 to convert the degrees to radians okay let's see what happens let me fit let me now simulate let me simulate on for 10 seconds to start with 10 seconds and let's see what happens to the speed speed now starts to increase you can see speed is increasing let's now use about 700 seconds simulation to see what happens to the speed you can see speed increases increases until it becomes stable constant why does it speed why does speed become constant the vehicle is accelerating but it does not accelerate forever why because we have width effect we have slope slope is constant and also we have roaring resistance from the tires therefore this speed will move at this point the speed will move constant okay that's how you form that's our first video on modeling the vehicle body this is a basic in the next video i'm going to go a little bit deeper until we complete this model thank you stay tuned for more